Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, I would like to look at how to run events on your Rust server. We're going to use the free event manager. And as you can see, it has some dependencies. So you need to have all these plugins installed to even create and run your events. Optionally, you could use any of these plugins to add more functionality to your events. Looking at my server, going into Oxide and then into plugins, you can see I have all the dependencies. I also have the permissions manager from Codefling. And I also installed the Team Deathmatch plugin, and that is the event or game type that I'm going to run in this example. I will link to all these plugins in the description. I quickly want to point out there's also a paid events plugin called the Arena plugin. This currently costs $30, but it has a lot more features. As you can see, you have some more options, some more events you can run, and also some more configurations you can do. In regards to Tabax, one of the interesting things from the Arena plugin is that you can also set a permission to be able to join a certain event. And you could then give access to that permission through Tabax. Unfortunately, the free version doesn't have an option to add a permission, so you will not really be able to integrate it into Tabax. But of course, the events can be integrated alongside other perks inside of your packages. I will only focus on the free event manager in this tutorial, but in the future, I will also make a tutorial on the paid arena plugin. So before you dive in, make sure you have all the dependencies installed and at least one of the game modes. In my case, I chosen team deathmatch. I am already connected to my server. And as you can see, I'm being attacked by a bear. That's not what I wanted to show. I wanted to show you that I can fly. So I am already a owner or a admin. Let's first of all, give ourselves permission to use all the plugins. So I'm going to do slash perms, click on my name, and then we're going to go through all the plugins and make sure to grant ourselves all the permissions. So for the event manager, we just have to do admin. Same thing for the kids plugin, we just grant just the admin permission. Permissions manager is not really necessary. For spawns, there are no permissions, so that's good. And then for the zone manager, it's a little bit different. You can see we have the zone permission and we also have a lot of ignore flags. So looking at the zone manager page on UMOD, if we scroll down, it says here, make sure you do not blindly grant players any of the ignore flags. And these flags we can see down here per zone, you could set different behaviors and these are called flags. If you set the kill sleepers flag to true, all the players that log out or go to sleep inside of the zone will automatically be killed. There are some very interesting ones that really apply to events as well, like no decay, no destroy, no loot, etc. So you could really set the rules inside of your zone. And for the chat commands, it says here, these are only accessible for players with auth level two. So basically being a owner or admin or with the permission zone manager dot zone. So if you have a team or moderators helping you, you could give your team the zone manager dot zone permission. But just for us, we don't have to have any permission because we already have auth level number two. We don't want to apply any of the flags and we don't have to give ourselves the zone permission. We done all the permissions that we have to do. So let's open up the event manager and see what kind of information we need to give it. So inside of chat, let's do, let's do slash event, then go into the admin page and let's say create event. We have to select the event type. As I showed you in the beginning, I also had the team deathmatch plugin installed. So we can then click on this and this is all the information it's asking for to create a event. It's asking for a zone ID. It's asking for a spawn file and it's also asking for a kit and then we can set some extra options. So we first need to create those three things. So let's close this for now, and then let's look for a nice location to run our event. You don't have to create your own arena. If you're not running a survival server, you could also run your events inside of Red Towns, making sure that it's really optimized FPS wise, because if you build your own arenas with a lot of building parts, it might not run smoothly for some people with potato computers. So I'm now in the harbor. Let's say we want to use this area for our arena. So I'm going to stand somewhere in the middle-ish. So now let's start with creating our zone. As always, you can find the chat command over here. There are more options than I will be showing in this tutorial. So go through documentation to make sure that you know exactly what kind of options you have. So let's do slash zone underscore add. You have successfully created a new zone. And this might be hard to see after YouTube done is conversion. But as you can see, we got this, we got these blue lines and everything inside of that is our area. I want to edit this slightly. So let's do slash zone size quotes and let's do 50, 50, 50 with a quote. And then we should get a square. Where is it? Right here. Could work. Let's, let's make it slightly smaller. 
zone space size. Let's do 30, 30, 30. And these are X, Y, and Z. So you could change this exactly to fit your arena. Let's see if this is a little bit better. Well, this, this will work for now. Um, of course, you can put as much time into making sure that it only encompasses exactly your arena. For this example, it being kind of okay is good enough. So now we have our zone. It's kind of the right size. Now we need to set up what kind of flags or what kind of behavior we want inside of the zone. So while being inside of the zone, we can do slash zone space flags, and this will open up the zone flag editor. It really depends on what kind of event you're running. So I'm not going to say what you should choose here. Go through the documentation, see what all of these flags do, and decide if it applies to your event or your situation. Let's start making some spawn files. So I'm going to stand on this site, and then we're going to say slash spawns new. And it says you are now creating a new spawn file. Then we can do slash spawns add. And I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to add several. Press enter, and now you can see that we created a spawn file with a one. So let's do the same thing, number two, and let's do number three over here. Then we have to save our database. So I'm going to say slash spawns save, and then let's do red team deathmatch, enter. And it says three spawn points saved into red team deathmatch or TDM. Let's do the same thing over here. So let's do slash spawns new to create a new file, add, and let's copy this one, two, three, and then we need to save this as well. Slash spawns, save blue TDM. And now we have our two spawn files. And then lastly, we need to create our kit, which is the items or weapons and clothing that the players will get during the event every time they respawn. So let's drop this out of our inventory. Let's go to F1, press on items. I'm just going to make a simple crossbow kit. Let's go ammunition. Let's see, what do we have? We need some shoes. Get some boots. And then let's get some mats as well. So let's do two syringes and three bandages. Let's do slash kit. And then let's do create new. Let's do TDMK for team deathmatch kit. We don't have to set any description because we're even going to hide it since it's only for the events. Auth level and permission, we can also leave empty. And then we can do copy from inventory. And it might say loading, just do it again. And it should all load up. If you don't see any pictures here, make sure you have the image library plugin installed and all the other dependencies for the plugins that we're using. So now we have our items in here. We have a name, maximum uses, cooldown all doesn't really apply and we're not using any copy and paste. So let's do save kit. Saved the kit TDMK. In theory, we should now have everything to create our event. So let's do slash event, go into admin, create event, team deathmatch. We have to select a zone and there are two zones at the moment. And I wanted to show you how you can make sure that you have the correct zone. So I'm going to stand inside of the zone and then I'm going to say slash zone underscore edit. And it says you are now editing zone with the ID one, three, four. So I know which one is the correct zone. So let's go back to admin, create event, team deathmatch, zone one, three, four. TDM, and then team A spawn file. So let's do select, red team DM, team A kits, TDMK. And then we can change also the colors. I'm not going to do that. We could also do individual clothing. I'm also not going to do that. So you could separate the clothing kit from the weapons kit. I'm just going to give them one kit. So let's move over to team B spawn file, blue TDM. So here we have red TDM, blue TDM, team B kit, TDMK, same kit as the other one. We don't want to change the color and we don't have a separate clothing kit. We're only going to have one class, so we're not going to enable the class selector. If you have multiple kits, they can choose what kind of kit they want. For the time limit, I'm going to say 30, so I can show you what happens when it ends. Score limit, let's do 10. Minimum players, I'll set it to one. So when I join by myself, it will actually start. And maximum, doesn't really matter in this case. You can, of course, set whatever you want. And we can also choose to close the event on start, meaning that if the event starts, no other people can join while the event is already running. Let's also check mark this, and then we should be able to just click save. 
successfully saved event TDM. So let's move away for a little bit. Let's throw away the gear that we have, grab something and I'll put on a suit so you can see that my inventory and clothing are clearly different. So let's open up the event, go to admin, open event. So let's do the actual TDM that we just created. And it says opened event TDM. And there's also a message inside of the chat and it tells them to do slash event to join. It gives us all the information, also what we can win. These wins are editable and I will also show you after the event where you can change this. Let's enter the event. And since we now have reached the minimum, it should actually start in 60 seconds. And also the 60 second timer is configurable. We automatically get teleported. We are in one of the teams. And as you can see, we are in one of the two spawn points. And now it's actually started. So I got my bow. I got my arrows exactly how we set it up. We can see the time at the top and we can see the score in the top right. So I only set it to 30 seconds. So we don't have to wait for a long time for this to end. Let's try to run outside of the arena. It says here, return, you will be killed. So we have to return. So that automatically works as well. After 30 seconds or whatever timer you set, all players will be teleported back. It tells me that I've won. So I got my five scrap as well. And as you can see, my inventory and location are exactly the same as where I was before I joined the event. I'll quickly show you where you can find some of the configurables. So back at GTX, our hosting company, let's go to the config file inside of Oxide. And here we have the event manager. When we open this up, as you can see here, we can change the winnings. We can also change the type of winning. So if you're using the server rewards plugin, or the economics plugin. You could also reward people points for kills or wins, etc. You can change the timers, the pre-timer, the match timer, and some of the message behavior you can change and also the chat icon. If you go into language or lang and then into English or of course, whatever language you run inside of the zone manager, there are some messages that you could change to suit more your branding or your wording. And the same goes for event manager. You could change these to really give your own kind of feeling or wording to the whole events and not use the default messages. This is as bare bone as a events running tutorial you could make. This is a good start though for you to get this up and running and then start adding different game modes, different features to the whole events. And also the zone manager works with a lot of different plugins. There are some quite in-depth things you could do using all kinds of different plugins hooked into the zone manager and event manager. Once again, the arena plugin is also a thing. If you want even more configuration, read through the documentation and see if anything that you're missing from the free version is in the arena version. I will also do a tutorial on the paid arena plugin, but I wanted to start with the free version that is available for everyone. Hopefully this was helpful. If anything is unclear, you can always leave a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tebex store.